Hi, the application we will take a closer look on right now is what we call mixing loop. Well, a mixing loop is a system where we have one set of temperature on the side which we call primary side and another set of temperature on the secondary side. And uh, the reason for having this uh, is uh, two. We get what we call a hydraulic uh, separation where the main pump, which could be out in the system here, it could also be district entity where the, the pressure is supplied from the district heat heating network. But anyhow, if it's a boiler, there will be another pump out here. And this pump will have the, the um, obligation, so to speak, to deliver the pressure exactly to this point here uh, and no further. And from this point and out in the system, the secondary pump will have to overcome the resistance. When we have this type of application, we have a motorized valve also. And the motorized valve is able to adjust the flow temperature on the secondary side. You see the motorized valve is placed on the primary side. So when this, is, this valve is opening and closing, if it's opening, it allows the return water from the system to go directly back to the main source. Um, and then fresh hot water can be let into the system. But if it's closed, then the water which is coming back from the system is then recirculated all the time out in the system and thereby adjusting the flow temperature to the level which is currently needed. Okay, um, applications like this can be seen in widespread uh, radiator systems. It could also be air handling units, cooling coils or whatever, but my main uh, focus here is that if we have a kind of a widespread system where there's a long distance from the pump and to the final consumer out here, then the, the pressure loss in a system like this will, will increase exponentially, meaning that the greater flow, the, the pressure resistance will re rise in second proportion. For that reason, when we connect that to our pump, we would cho typically choose proportional pressure because in that way we will know at maximum flow uh, level in the system we will ha have uh, the exact pressure which is needed and when the flow is reduced due to the different valves on the on the consumers out here we will at all times have sufficiently pressure to operate the system. Well, um, shortly we'll look on a different application, but where we also utilize the mixing loop. That will be in a short while. Another application where we need to utilize the function in a mixing loop is what we could call radiant cooling or heating. Meaning if we have a floor heating uh, where pipes is buried in the concrete, or if we have radiant cooling where we have cooling coils in, uh, in, in the ceiling above our heads. Well, in, in these cases, typically what is done is that we have a kind of a manifold where all the pipes is, uh, is uh, having its starting point. So if we have for one room and a second room and a third room, they will all be having their starting point within a very narrow uh, distance, typically wi within an area like this, or, but, but definitely in the same area as where the pump is placed. So for that reason, the pressure loss which the pump has to overcome uh, in, the, in, the, in the manifold is quite limited. You can see that if, if it's only an area like, like this in reality, then the pressure loss in this system here is rather limited. Well, of course, the pump has to overcome the pressure loss in the different pipes as well. So, for instance, if we have, let's say, 110 meter here, and really it does not, it does not 
uh, mean anything, the, the figures which I put here, it's just the principle. Uh, if we have 110 meters here, that, that means that this will be the reference circuit. So for, for this piece here, we need to add the equivalent of what 30 meters would, would have in resistance. And this will be set on a, on a valve, ty typically here on the return part here. So what we can see is that no matter what, these different circuits here will have the same conditions, so to speak. They will all have the equivalent of what 110 meters pipes will have in pressure resistance. And for that reason, the pressure loss which the pump has to overcome will be the same at all time due to the fact that it's the manifold is in a very you know, you know, short uh, distance. And this is just an example. There can be quite a lot more of these uh, circuits here. But when the pressure resistance will not really differ, uh, we need to choose constant pressure. So in a case like this, we need to calculate what is the pressure loss in this circuit here in 110 meters of pipes and then set the pump to deliver the exact uh, pressure which is needed for the system. Of course the flow can differ depending on how these valves are opening or closing but, uh, but no matter that the pressure resistance which the pump has to overcome with it will at all times be the same and for that reason we choose constant pressure. But again, we need a mixing loop to operate a good radiant cooling or heating system as uh, we have seen here. Thank you.